In the history of music, there have been artists who have left their mark. That is why in Tops, we bring the 10 best singers in English of all time, where we will take into account factors such as their influence in the world, their commercial success, their transcendence, and the voice is the most important thing. In this video, we will see several music legends who have contributed to the good of music in each of their respective genres and their work has immortalized them, becoming idols for millions of people. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your like to upload more content. Thank you so much. Number 10. Ray Charles Born in Albany, United States in 1930, he was an American singer, instrumentalist, and actor considered one of the most important figures in music in the 20th century. In Ray's repertoire, you can find everything from the most traditional blues and gospel to jazz and soul, a style in which he developed a dizzying career. It is difficult to catalog his hundreds of songs, perhaps due to the eclecticism that always characterized Ray. During his long career, he received 12 Grammy Awards, which speaks of his ability and influence in music. Blind since the age of seven, Ray Charles learned to read and compose music in Braille. He studied in Florida, in a high school in St. Augustine, and since he was a child he participated in different musical events. His recording career began in 1953, when he was hired by agent Ahmed Erdogan, who introduced him to Atlantic Records. From then on, Ray Charles would be known as one of the main and essential figures of rhythm and blues. He lived successively in various cities such as New Orleans and Texas and, after joining Ruth Brown, he formed a band that also included David Newman on saxophone and Joe Bridgewater on trumpet. In the mid-50s, Charles created the kind of magnificent fusion between blues, gospel, and swing and imposed to his music also the frenzy of rock and roll. Already with his song I Got a Woman in 1954, he was at the top of music. Owner of a singular voice recognizable by all, his disguised figure became one of the most representative icons of 20th century music. His broken voice, marked, tragic, melodious and sweet and installed on the border of his own interpretative resources, constituted one of his best skills. As a pianist, Charles had a very marked and percussive style almost unsurpassed in the blues. Overlapping chords, frenetic rhythms, and smooth melodies were the most characteristic features of Ray Charles at the piano. He also played, albeit very anecdotally, the saxophone. His immense popularity led him to venture into the movies in the mid-60s. Ray! Yeah, Steve! I gave the second trumpet a B natural. Oh, that's right. That's right. It's a better sound, too. Say, band... Let's try to play the arrangement right now. You, you may not like it, but still, remember, it's not costing you a penny. So let's get on with it here now. One, two, one, two, three. In that same decade, Ray Charles was arrested on numerous occasions for possession of illegal substances, to which he was addicted for 17 years. On his third arrest, he was detained by the police, but was able to escape unharmed because he was admitted to a rehabilitation clinic in San Francisco, California. Charles finally passed away at the age of 73 on June 10, 2004 at his home in California due to a liver ailment he had been suffering from for some time. His legacy was so important that a biographical film dedicated to his musical work was made the year of his death. His music is still listened to and his influence is undeniable. Number 9. Marvin Gaye Baby, I'm hot just like an oven. Marvin Pence Gaye Jr. Known by his stage name Marvin Gaye, 
was an American musician, producer, and singer of soul and smouth soul commonly nicknamed as the Prince of Soul. Throughout his career, Marvin Gaye sold around 25 million albums, contrary to his early career. Over the years Gaye has become a mainstay and icon of soul, releasing several albums that would revolutionize and change the course of that genre in the 1970s and 1980s. During his early musical career he recorded numerous hits of his time such as Pride and Joy, Let's Get It On, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, Sexual Healing in the Number One in the United States and United Kingdom, I Heard It Through the Grapevine, the latter being considered a soul hit, reaching number one on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1968 and is listed in position 81 of the best 500 songs of all time according to Rolling Stone. He was born in Washington, D.C., where his father was a preacher, minister of the House of God, a conservative Christian congregation with elements of Pentecostalism and Orthodox Judaism with strict codes of conduct and did not celebrate any holidays. Marvin began singing in the church choir, a place about which he would later say, I learned the joy of music, yet at home, I had to endure the moral fundamentalism and angry outbursts of my father. During those years, Marvin learned to play the drums, being forced to give up athletics because of his father's intransigence. He attended high school in his hometown, and while in school, he gave several performances, drawing attention for his rendition of Mario Lanza's Be My Love. For this reason he became fully involved in the Motown label, where he collaborated as a singer and later became a drummer in the band The Miracles, as well as in Steve Wonder's single, Fingertips. During this time he met Anna Gordy, whom he married in 1961. His solo career reached its peak thanks to I Heard It Through the Grapevine, a song that topped the Billboard R&B chart and sold over 4 million copies. From that moment on, motivated by his own artistic ability, he decided to focus his songs on themes of social criticism, which at the time were very popular within the soul genre. It was in 1971 when he released what would be considered his best album, What's Going On, in which he made a compilation, mixing classical music and jazz. This album reached first and second place in all the soul and pop charts, opening the doors for other artists of color to be recognized as well. The following year he made the entire soundtrack for the film Trouble Man. Sometime later in 1976 he recorded his next album, entitled Let's Get It On whose song of the same name has become a symbol of sensuality that has survived throughout the decades. Although his success seemed to go on and on, Gay was not far from problems in his personal life as some of them led his marriage to failure. These difficulties brought as a consequence that his following works turned out to be of low artistic quality. In the late 70s, he released some records that did not fit his style. He found himself involved in drugs and the disinterest could be perceived in his voice tone, as it did not have the same smoothness and melody that characterized him. In 1981, Marvin signed a contract with CBS and the following year released Midnight Love, the album that gave him back his lost success. This work contained singles like Sexual Healing, with which he demonstrated to his listeners that his energy was still alive and well and regenerated by the rhythmic movement of the 80s. Despite his return to fame, the artist sank back into drugs and was forced to return to his family's home in the United States. To get away from the counterproductive life he was leading, however, the arguments with his father did not stop until on April 1, 1984, while they were having a fierce fight, the preacher killed his son with two shots. During the trial for Marvin's death, his father was declared innocent, alleging that the cause of the shooting was self-defense, since according to him, the soul star became dangerously aggressive when he lost his temper. After the violent situation, Gay's mother divorced her husband stating that she would never forgive him for what he had done. Although this soul eminence never returned to the stage, his death did not prevent him from making history, as in 1987 he was posthumously inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. There were also many tributes in his memory, one of which dates back to 1991, when Rod Stewart and Tina Turner recorded a melodic version of one of his songs, It Takes Two. His music has been used in a number of films, television series, documentaries, and even video games. 
He remains one of the most influential artists in history. His album What's Going On was voted the greatest album of all time. Number 8. Whitney Houston Nicknamed The Voice, Whitney Houston holds the Guinness World Record as the most awarded singer of all time. American pop singer and actress, the extraordinary voice of this beautiful singer always captivated everyone whenever she appeared in public. After not very promising beginnings, her producers, who had confidence in her great talent, decided to wait for a propitious moment to launch her, painstakingly preparing an album that would end up being number one in the United States called Whitney Houston. From that moment on, success accompanied her in everything she undertook, including her film debut in the movie The Bodyguard, whose soundtrack, performed by Whitney herself, was a record seller in 1992. Born in New Jersey in 1963, Whitney Houston began singing in a gospel group at the age of 11. After starting a promising career as a model in her youth, her vocation as a singer gradually took over as she collaborated in the choirs and second voices in the recordings of important artists. In 1983, she signed a contract with the label Arista and her first album was released in 1985 with an impressive success, which by the end of 1986 had already exceeded 10 million copies sold, a figure never reached by the debut album of any star. From then on, Whitney Houston's career quickly led her to become the most important performer in the world. In 1987, she returned to the top of the American charts with the song I Wanna Dance With Somebody. Before the beginning of the 1990s, the young Whitney had already broken a new record, selling more than 25 million copies of her first two albums. Married since July 1992 to fellow singer Bobby Brown, in November of that same year the soundtrack of the film The Bodyguard was released, a movie in which Whitney shared the leading role with the well-known actor Kevin Costner. Both the film and the album with her celebrated I Will Always Love You, still the best-selling song of all time, became the most important milestones in the career of the vocalist from New Jersey, the first woman to reach number one on her country's album chart. International tours followed one after the other. In July 1994, together with instrumentalist Kenny G, she was invited to perform at the closing ceremony of the To Take Part in the Closing Ceremony of the World Cup, broadcast to the five continents with Whitney as the musical star. But despite her professional success, Whitney Houston faced personal struggles. Her relationship with singer Bobby Brown was tumultuous, marked by substance abuse and legal problems. Whitney was known for her impressive vocal range that spanned more than four of eight. Her ability to hit high notes with ease and sing ballads with unparalleled sensitivity made her an incomparable singer. After returning to the stage in the 2000s, Whitney had been dragging with her a series of addictions and substance abuse, which would lead to her artistic and personal downfall. Houston's impeccable voice became rough and hoarse. In addition, she could no longer hit the high notes for which she had become famous. She entered rehab twice before declaring teetotalism in 2010, but during the process the diva had to cancel concerts and was arrested at an airport for drug possession. In 2011, at a tribute concert for Michael Jackson, she was so skinny that it was said she was going to die the next day. In a famous interview with Diane Sawyer in 2002, Houston said, The worst demon is me. I can either be my best friend or my worst enemy. In the end, she became the victim of a decline that she herself managed and sadly let it all come crashing down when finally, in 2012, strangely, when everything seemed to indicate that Whitney Houston had regained the reins of her life and career, the news of her death hit the tickers, the singer was found lifeless in the bathtub of her bedroom, victim apparently of an ingestion of painkillers. After her death, numerous artists paid tribute to Whitney Houston by performing her songs and sharing stories about how she influenced their careers. Whitney Houston was not only one of the greatest singers of all time, but she also became a cultural icon, breaking racial barriers and leaving a lasting impact on music and popular culture. Despite her untimely departure, Whitney Houston's legacy lives on. Her music continues to touch people's hearts' hearts and her influence on the music industry is undeniable. Number 7. Bob Marley oh, 
Robert Nesta Marley, stage name Bob Marley, was a singer and songwriter considered as the greatest exponent and disseminator of reggae, Jamaican music, and the Rastafarian movement. Son of a Jamaican of English descent, Normal Marley, who died when Bob was nine years old, and an Afro-Jamaican, since he was a child his mulatto skin tone was a fire of contempt from the black Jamaicans around him. In addition to this fact, his childhood was not easy because of the situation of poverty in which he lived with his mother without water or electricity at home, but as a result of the relationship that his mother began with another man, Bunny Whaler, the family moved to the capital of the island, Kingston. Settled in a new home, young Marley became interested in music and songwriting. At that time it was common to hear artists such as Ray Charles and Fats Domino on the island's radio stations, who became some of his role models. His first steps in music came at the hands of Leslie Kahn, a music producer he met at an audition and who, impressed by his talent, offered him to record some songs. But this was not enough to achieve success, so months later he formed with Bunny Whaler, Peter Tosh, a young musician he had met in his music classes, the vocalist Junior Marvin and two backing singers the group The Wailing Whalers. After a time with the band, Marley moved to the United States with his mother and worked in a car factory. But his stay in the country lasted only a few months, as it was not the life he dreamed of. Back in Kingston, he reunited his old band and renamed it The Whalers, and married Rita Anderson, a reggae singer he had met before his move to the United States. At the time of his return, the Rastafarian movement was more established than ever on the island, something that influenced Marley's music. With 1973's Burning, the band's second album, they managed to position some of their songs in the charts. Every day and every night, we'll be together. The following years were years of intense work with the album's Rasta Revolution and Natty Dread of 1974, this last one with songs that reached great popularity as No Woman No Cry, with which they obtained a great international success, especially in the United Kingdom. All this together with the work of promoter of the Rastafari movement of pacifists that parallel carried Bob Marley with the objective of stopping the civil street war unleashed between the two main political parties. On one occasion, he and his wife were attacked and wounded by bullets. He also famously performed the One Love Peace concert, in which he got the two opposing political leaders to shake hands on stage, for which Marley received the United Nations Peace Medal and the Jamaican Order of Merit. For this, Bob occupies a significant place in this top for being such an influential artist and achieving things like this. Bob Marley's last years were spent between international tours and concerts, in which he actively participated despite suffering from melanoma that had been detected a few months earlier. Finally, in 1981 he died in a hospital in Miami, aged just 36, and was given a state funeral in a ceremony that mixed Orthodox, Ethiopian and Rastafarian elements. The world's greatest representative of reggae had passed away, leaving behind a legacy that was published posthumously in two albums, Confrontation of 1983 and Legend of 1984, as well as 13 children, one of them with singer Lauren Hill. It is estimated that Bob Marley has sold more than 180 million records worldwide and is ranked as the fifth highest grossing deceased artist. Number 6. Frank Sinatra Come what might for the sake of having you near in spite of a warning point. Francis Albert Sinatra, popularly known as Frank Sinatra, was an American singer and actor. He left, through his records and live performances, a canonical legacy in terms of male vocal performance in music. He is one of the most representative figures of the 20th century and of the Italian-American scene. Frank Sinatra was born in December 1915 into a family of Italian immigrants. In his childhood he was a sports fan, especially boxing, a facet inherited from his father, athletics and swimming. Although as a child he already liked to sing in his father's tavern, his musical vocation was not born until 1933 after attending a concert of the singer Bing Crosby. Board the sleigh, huh? Here we go. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Two years later he joined a group called the Hoboken Tour and appeared on a radio program which earned him performances in various shows in the United States. In 1939, trumpeter Harry James hired him as a singer in his orchestra. Due to his outstanding personality, in 1942 he became an idol of the American youth. 
1943, he began his solo career with the release of the LP All or Nothing at All, which sold 1 million copies. In 1944, he began his success as a radio phenomenon with the program The Frank Sinatra Show. With his popularity on the rise, that same year he made his film debut with the movie Higher and Higher. At the beginning of the 50s, difficult times began for the artist. On November 1, 1951, with his career going through serious difficulties, the sudden decline of his popularity, the failure of his films and singing and music that had become outdated, he obtained a divorce from Nancy Sinatra to marry actress Ava Gardner. In 1955, he resumed his musical career with the album In the Wee Small Hours, which reached the second place in the American charts. In the 1960s, he continued his brilliant recording career with titles such as Nice and Easy, 1961, and All Alone, 1962. In the same year, Frank Sinatra founded his own record label reprise, and in 1965 the artist received two Grammys. Throughout his professional career, Sinatra recorded more than 1,300 songs and participated in more than 50 films. He received a multitude of awards and tributes, including 10 Grammys, the Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences Award, and the U.S. Government's Medal of Freedom. His recordings reached the music charts 209 times. He is one of only 33 artists to hold three stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Sinatra built his style on the basis of a natural understanding of popular music, as understood by Bing Crosby, Fred Astaire, Benny Goodman, and Louis Armstrong, exploiting the idea that popular music in all its forms should be an extension of conversation. Technically, he was characterized by his careful precision in phrasing and his mastery of breath control. The range of his voice was close to that of a bass baritone. Moreover, he was an absolute ear, just like Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Michael Jackson, or Freddie Mercury. As for his artistic category, this lies in his interpretative ability to convey the emotions and feelings implicit in the lyrics of the songs. Sinatra is credited with being the first singer to make conscious use of the means of sound amplification, with the aim of placing his voice above the sound of the dominant orchestra of American popular music of the early 20th century and to bring it closer to the intimacy of the listener's ear. The importance in his life of his work as an actor was capital, for example, it was precisely through his role in From Here to Eternity, how he managed to get out of a personal and artistic slump in the transition from the 40s to the 50s, to rise to the top of popularity, in addition to winning the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for his performance. The American music critic Robert Christgau referred to Sinatra as the best singer of the 20th century. His popularity is only comparable to Elvis Presley, Bing Crosby, The Beatles, and Michael Jackson. It is estimated that he sold more than 160 million copies worldwide and is one of the most commercially successful artists, grossing more than $210 million for his work. Spreading the news I'm leaving today Number 5. Aretha Franklin She was an American soul, R&B, and gospel singer. Nicknamed Lady Soul or Queen of Soul, she was the maximum representative of this genre. According to Rolling Stone magazine, she is the greatest singer in history and the greatest exponent of music in general. An unmistakable voice that has been enjoyed by millions of people around the world. In her reign, she has been able to adapt to the musical changes of each era. Aretha's musical legacy is simply unique. Her career dates back to the young age of 10, when as the daughter of Reverend Clarence Franklin, she toured the United States with a gospel group. Her first recordings were with the Columbia label and in them this little girl from Detroit knew how to capture an unmistakable style. Later she signed with the Atlantic label, with which Aretha achieved numerous hits that today are classics of soul music such as Respect, Thing, A Natural Woman and many other songs that marked later generations. You're liar and you're cheat. The number of her followers increased with the albums live at Fillmore West and Young, Gifted and Black, both pop and R&B based. The rest of the 1970s was artistically poor due to her problems with her variable moods and broken marriages combined with her talent, declining songwriting and poor choice of material. She won 18 Grammy Awards throughout her career. 
She continued to work throughout the 1980s, a period in which she collaborated with Annie Lennox and George Michael on I Knew You Were Waiting. She also won three special Grammy categories, Legend in 1991, Career Achievement in 1994, and Person of the Year in 2008. In 1985, Michigan declared that Aretha Franklin's voice was a natural resource of the state. On January 20, 2009, she sings, My Country, Tis of Thee, at President Barack Obama's inauguration. She was the first woman to be recognized in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Aretha died in 2018 due to pancreatic cancer. Throughout her life, she sold 75 million records and is considered by Rolling Stone magazine as the greatest singer of all time. After her passing, she was awarded the 2019 Pulitzer Prize for her incredible contribution to American music and culture. Number 4. Freddie Mercury Freddie Mercury was a British singer and songwriter who achieved worldwide fame as the lead vocalist and pianist for the rock band Queen. As a performer, he has been recognized for his powerful voice and extravagant stage presence. Farrakh Bolsara was born on September 5, 1946 in Gujarati, in the British colony of Zanzibar, an island that today belongs to Tanzania. He has been and continues to be one of the most influential artists in the musical history of the 20th century and one of the greatest icons of the homosexual community. Of Iranian origin and of Zoroastrian religion, on the occasion of his father's work in the Secretary of State for the Colonies, at the age of seven he was sent to Bombay, India, to study in a British-style boarding school where his teachers soon discovered his musical talent, suggesting to his parents that he begin to teach music, specifically piano. At the age of 17, Freddie moved to England. In 1970, Brian May and Roger Taylor proposed Freddie to join their band Queen, where he would later change his name from Freddie Bolsara to Freddie Mercury, after the Greek mythological god Mercury. This change meant a turnaround in Freddie's personality, as he began to behave in a very extravagant way in his performances with the band. A year later John Dacon would join and the Queen era would begin. The group began its first concert tour of the county of Cornwall. During this stage, Freddie's training in graphic design also helped him to create the group's logo. It was also at this time that he met Mary Austin, his most important partner and best friend. The group released their eponymous first album Queen in 1973 and soon became one of the most important bands in rock music. Queen 2 and Sheer Her Attack, both from 1974, preceded the group's great success A Night at the Opera in 1975, an album that shows Freddie's passion for this musical genre and of which the masterpiece Bohemian Rhapsody, which stands out for its unusual length of six minutes, and the always beautiful song Love of My Life, dedicated to his partner and friend Mary Austin, are part of. Open your eyes, look up to the skies and with a huge success and with the public in their pockets, the band quickly climbed the music charts and Freddie became a mass idol for his peculiar style and personality. Although in real life he claimed to be shy. According to his own statements, when I'm on stage, I'm very extroverted, but inside I'm completely different. During this decade, the popularity acquired by the group's songs even allowed him to make one of his dreams come true, to perform with the Royal Ballet, interpreting and dancing the songs Bohemian Rhapsody and Crazy Little Thing Called Love. There were years of debauchery in which the crazy parties of the singer were constant and in which he manifested his homosexual orientation and a long list of lovers. In fact, his affair with a record company executive was the one that ended his relationship with Mary Austin. In the 80s, with a huge popularity beyond the UK, Freddie Mercury changed his long hair look for short hair and a mustache and began a relationship with hairdresser Jim Hutton. This decade included the albums The Game 1980, Hot Space of 1982, A Kind of Magic of 1986 and performances as remarkable as the Live Aid Benefit Concert of 1985, one of their most remembered performances. During this decade, the band members also experimented solo. In the case of Freddie, he released two solo albums, Mr. Bad Guy in 1985 and Barcelona in 1988, together with the opera singer Montserrat Cabal. 
In the 90s, and in the midst of a tremendous success, his excesses began to take their toll in AIDS, which he had contracted in 1986 and had strongly denied suffering from, marked the last years of his career. But there came a time when his physical deterioration and the decrease in tours and concerts began to raise suspicions, so he ended up confessing them publicly at a press conference on November 24, 1991. A day later, the iconic artist died of pneumonia complicated by AIDS. He had lived his last years in seclusion with his partner, Jim Hutton, but in spite of this, he bequeathed most of his fortune and the rights to his lyrics to his faithful friend Mary Austin. Freddie Mercury's death shocked the music scene, with tribute concerts such as the one held at London's Wembley Arena, in which artists such as Elton John, Metallica, George Michael, and David Bowie took part. The Mercury Phoenix Trust, an HIV NGO, was also created in his honor. Freddie was named as the greatest rock legend of all time, according to a British poll, and a statue was erected in his honor in the Swiss town of Montreux, where he spent long periods of time. Queen enters the select list of the most successful bands of all time, with over 200 million recorded sales worldwide. Thanks for so much, Freddie. Number 3. Elvis Presley, the King of Rock and Roll. If you're looking for trouble, you came to the right place. Elvis Aaron Presley, known as Elvis Presley or simply Elvis, was an American singer and actor, considered one of the most popular cultural icons of the 20th century. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. He is nicknamed as the king of rock and roll. Elvis Presley was undoubtedly a pioneer and leading exponent of rock and roll, a man who influenced the history of the world beyond his music. He was a precursor of musical rhythms never heard before in his time, a fashion promoter, a pioneer artist in everything he did. Like all pioneers, he was misunderstood for his time, his legacy goes beyond being a rock and roll star. From his taboo-breaking beginnings, Elvis Presley was the first white singer to perform songs by African-American composers, something that for his time was completely crazy. Elvis innovated by combining musical rhythms such as gospel, blues, R&B, and country music, most of these rhythms of African origin. Thanks to this, with his music he made it possible for white people to know better the African-American culture and consequently, broke ethnic taboos that at that time generated racism and controversy in the United States. Elvis Presley was the one who made rock and roll synonymous with rebellion and youth, his challenging attitude, his original elegance, beauty and the way he performed on stage will always be inspiring for any musician. As the creator of rockabilly, he made rhythms and musical expressions that for his time no one ever even imagined. In 1956, when Elvis released his first self-titled album, the 11-track Elvis Presley, he inspired an entire generation. Not only was he a musical pioneer, he pioneered a new way of life for young people. At the age of 10, Elvis sang for the first time in public at a regional contest where he won second prize. He earned his first dollars as a movie usher and truck driver for an electric company. In 1953, Elvis entered the recording studio of Sun Records, a modest local label, and recorded his first record as a gift to his mother, which cost him $4. At the beginning of 1956, Elvis Presley arrived in Nashville to work with musicians from the city and from this collaboration his first quality songs were born, one of them, Heartbreak Hotel, would reach number one in the charts. The same year he shot his first film, Love Me Tender, by Robert D. Webb, where the Wall Street Journal dedicated an article to him in which he highlighted the $22 million that the merchandising associated with his image had collected up to that moment. Exaltation of the erratic melodic myth that Elvis, who his fans called the pelvises, drove fans crazy all over the world.
His career in the movies gave much to talk about, it is undeniable that even his hairstyle is a basis of men's hair fashion. In 1958, he went to the German Federal Republic to perform his military service and exploit the image of the patriot and exemplary son, where he met Priscilla and Beaulieu, whom he would marry nine years later. While new records of his continued to appear in America, breaking all sales records, Elvis Presley graduated in March 1960 and immediately resumed his artistic activity to chain a long series of number one in the American charts with titles such as Hound Dog, It's Now or Never, Are You Lonesome Tonight, and starred in no less than 10 films, among which it is worth mentioning, Girls 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 of 1962 and Viva Las Vegas of 1964. In the second half of the decade, the so-called British Invasion began, starring groups such as the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. This led to a certain erosion in the singer's popularity, aggravated by an apparent artistic crisis that lasted until 1968, when he was offered to star in a television special that became one of the biggest hits in the history of the small screen, the 68 special. The first years of the 1970s, however, meant for Elvis Presley a new creative slump aggravated by his drug addiction and the reclusion in his particular fantasy world that his Graceland mansion became. In 1973, he divorced Priscilla Presley and his image acquired the clearly excessive tone that characterized his last appearances, exaggerated to pay overweight and white leather suits with rhinestones. Elvis was the most successful artist of his time. He influenced artists or bands such as Kiss, The Rolling Stones, The Beatles, or Michael Jackson and is still an inspiration for thousands of singers and musical groups around the world. His musical legacy helped to consolidate genres such as rockabilly, blues rock, jazz rock, garage rock, among others of its derivatives. Some experts claim that Elvis, along with Bill Halley, are the creators of rock and roll. On June 26th, 1977 he offered his last concert in Indianapolis, where he left us this master class, where his incredible voice made more than one person cry. God the King passed away on August 16, 1977 at the age of 42 in his Graceland Mansion due to a cardiac arrest. His last albums were not as successful as the first ones of his career. Elvis, despite his deteriorating health, gave his best in all his concerts and recordings until the last day of his life. With around 1 billion records sold around the world, Elvis Presley is considered the best-selling artist of all time and in 2016 Forbes ranked him as the fourth highest earning deceased celebrity with $27 million. Although the king of rock and roll recorded more than 600 songs in his lifetime, he never wrote any of them. His producers bought songs from talented songwriters of the time. In addition, Elvis, famous for the energetic way he performed his songs, never received a formal music lesson he played by ear. He recorded around 20 albums and starred in 30 blockbuster movies around the world. Elvis had 18 number one hits in the United States from Heartbreak Hotel in 1956 to Suspicious Minds in 1969. The King died in 1977, but he lives and will live on in the hearts of the people who follow him and his musical legacy will live on in all the hearts of the people who love his music. Thank you for everything Elvis. Number 2. Michael Jackson. The King of Pop. Singer, dancer, musician, actor, choreographer, songwriter, producer, entrepreneur, arranger, and philanthropist. The reasons why Michael Jackson is and will continue to be considered the undisputed king of pop are innumerable. As a result, his musical legacy endures to this day and continues to be loved by thousands of people of all ages around the world. His career in music began at a very young age when, together with his brothers, he formed part of the Jackson 5, one of the paradigmatic groups within the groups of child prodigies, which also served as a platform to launch his career and become the best soloist ever seen in the history of contemporary music. Born on August 29, 1958 in Gary, Indiana, United States, Michael Joseph Jackson was the seventh of nine children born to Joseph and Catherine Jackson. 
He is undoubtedly considered the last great star that the world of music has given us and the first great artist who brought audiences of all origins, marking the beginning of a new era for future African-American artists. In addition, this genius marked a whole generation that admired his artistic talent. To this day, he continues to be a reference for great artists and his influence is reflected in many songs today. Perhaps Michael Jackson's main contribution lies in the integration he achieved between pop music and some African-American rhythms, especially from the blues. It was the unprecedented energetic function of two musical universes that through his voice gave rise to a unique style, often imitated. Visually, Michael Jackson's image remains in the memory of thousands of people around the world, whether they admired him or not. This monster of the stage was one of the first to exploit the benefits of the music video as a hybrid genre between the aesthetics of visual art and marketing. According to Guinness World Records, Jackson has been the most awarded singer in history. The album Thriller is the best-selling album of all time, with more than 70 million copies worldwide. Considered one of the top 20 albums of all time, Thriller was Jackson's sixth studio album, released in 1982 and won eight Grammy Awards in 1984. In addition, the King of Pop was also a pioneer in philanthropic work among music celebrities. Jackson's support for Africa was famous, and it is said that he also inspired many other pop and rock singers and bands to support social causes, at least in terms of public image. He began his career as an 11-year-old boy with his brothers in the Jackson 5, with whom he released hit songs such as I Want You Back and ABC. World fame came with his solo career, which began in 1979 with the album The Wall, which included hits such as Don't Stop Till You Get Enough and Rock With You. Enigmatic, ambiguous, mysterious with his great manias and his touches of generosity, Jackson won 13 Grammy Awards and sold around 75 million records. Although he is known for his controversial change in skin pigmentation, the singer received praise from the Afro community for breaking racial barriers in the music industry because after Thriller was a huge success, in 1982 he began to be called the king of pop. In the early 1980s, Jackson became a dominant figure in popular music. His music videos, most notably Beat It, Billie Jean and Thriller, from his 1982 album Thriller, are credited with breaking down racial barriers and transforming the medium into an art form and promotional tool. The popularity of these helped bring the MTV television network to fame. The 1987 album Bad produced the number one single on the Billboard Hot 100, making it the first album to have five number one singles on that chart. He continued to innovate with videos such as Scream throughout the 1990s and forged a reputation as a solo artist on several tours. Through his stage and video performances, Jackson popularized a series of complex dance techniques such as the robot and the moonwalk, to which he gave his name. Jackson is one of the few artists to have been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice and was also inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame and the Dance Hall of Fame as the only pop and rock dancer. Jackson traveled the world attending events in honor of his solidarity and in 2000 the Guinness Book of Records recognized him for supporting 39 charities more than any other artist. As an additional fact, Michael Jackson is the artist who has generated more money after his death with more than $2,300,000,000 dollars and the one who has generated more money in total, with more than 6000000 million. The attention, influence, being so mediatic, Michael Jackson became the most representative figure of music in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. His fame was so great that the mere presence of the King of Pop attracted large numbers of people just to see him. He is the only and first artist of all time to achieve number ones in the 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, 2000s, and 2010s. Finally, after a famous and mediatic life since the age of 11, Michael Jackson left the world at the age of 50 due to a cardiorespiratory arrest caused by a bad prescription from his personal doctor. He left us the most influential, successful, talented, mediatic, important, supportive and altruistic solo artist that music has ever given us.
Number 1. The Beatles. The Liverpool Four. The next song we'd like to sing. The Beatles are considered the most influential group in the history of contemporary music. Formed in Liverpool, England, in 1960, the quartet of John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison and Ringo Starr revolutionized popular music with their fusion of rock and roll, pop, folk and classical music, as well as their innovative production and arrangements. The Beatles' importance in music is incalculable. During their short career, which lasted only a few years, they left a lasting legacy that has influenced generations of musicians and fans. The Beatles' creation of a new sound is considered one of the highlights of their career. As their music evolved, the group introduced a unique blend of styles and genres that combined rock and roll, pop, folk and classical music in an innovative way. This allowed them to create a unique and fresh sound that quickly attracted a global audience. When I was younger, so much younger than today. For example, on the 1967 album Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, we can see how the band used a variety of unconventional instruments and recording techniques such as the inclusion of wind instruments and strings, as well as the use of recording and mixing effects to create a more complex and sophisticated sound. Wednesday morning. They also used elements of classical music such as harmonies and melodies in songs like A Day in the Life or Within You Without You, which allowed them to expand the boundaries of popular music and reach a wider audience. Having read the book, I'd love to turn you. They also laid the foundations for the development of modern rock and pop. The Beatles' production innovation is one of the most important points of their legacy in music. From the beginning, the group has been known for using unconventional recording and mixing techniques to create a unique and distinctive sound. Another of the most notable aspects of their production was the use of saturation on the amplifiers. This allowed them to create a more raw and powerful sound, which became one of the distinctive characteristics of their music. They also used recording effects such as Dilly and Echo to create a sense of depth and spaciousness in their songs. The Beatles' impact on fashion and popular culture was significant. As their fame grew, their hairstyle, clothing and accessories became a symbol of youth and rebellion. This style became a counterculture icon and was replicated throughout the world. The Beatles also pioneered the use of music to raise awareness of social and political issues. Their songs addressed issues such as peace, love and social justice and their message of unity and universal love resonated with a young generation seeking change. I love them. I don't care what anybody thinks. I love the Beatles for them at all. The band was also one of the first to advocate for African American rights and racial equality in the United States and was actively involved in social and political causes. 
The band also had a major impact on popular culture in general, pioneering the use of television and mass media to promote their music and convey their message. Their appearances on television programs such as The Ed Sullivan Show attracted millions of viewers and helped create a culture of live music and mass concerts. In conclusion, the Beatles are one of the most influential groups in the history of music. Their unique fusion of styles and genres, their innovative production and arrangements, and their impact on culture and society at large have made them an enduring force in popular music. Their music and legacy continue to inspire new generations of musicians and fans, and their influence will continue to be evident in music and popular culture for many years to come. The Beatles is a band that has left an indelible mark on music history and their work remains relevant and valuable today. The Beatles is undoubtedly the most successful group in the history of music, with around 1,200,000,000 records sold worldwide, which has made its members become extremely wealthy musicians, such as Paul McCartney, who has a fortune of around $1 billion. There is no doubt that the legacy and history of the Beatles is straight out of a blockbuster movie and that their significant contribution to music in general will be forever captured in the hearts of those who love their art. Without further ado, we thank you for joining us on this historical journey, remembering these great legends. If you agree with the top, we invite you to comment and like us, as well as to subscribe to the channel. We hope you enjoyed it. We will be back with more content. Thank you so much.